we are the reserve currency. And I see no option for any other currency to be the reserve currency. And, and uh, uh, I think that nobody understands the situation better than Jay Powell. Over the past few years, the Federal Reserve has telegraphed that they intend to monetize the debt by printing trillions of dollars, even as they insist that they're fighting inflation. Already, other major economies in the world, such as China, Saudi Arabia, and Brazil, are moving away from the dollar in anticipation of this. My question is, are we likely to face a time in the future when the US dollar is no longer the global reserve currency? How is Berkshire prepared for this possibility? And what can we do as American citizens to attempt to shelter ourselves from what's beginning to look like the beginnings of de-dollarization? Well. I, I should ask you to come up here and answer some questions. I mean, <laughs> the, uh, it's very interesting. I mean, we are the reserve currency. And I see no option for any other currency to be the reserve currency. And, and uh, uh, I think that nobody understands the situation better than Jay Powell. And uh, uh, I... But he's not in control of, of fiscal policy. And every now and then he drops a few hints. Uh, and there was no question that, that when, the, uh, when, 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 when the pandemic broke out, I mean, it was a semi-warlike situation. But nobody knows how far you can go with the paper currency before it gets out of control, if, and particularly if you're the reserve, world's reserve currency. Nobody knows the answer to that. And you don't want to try and pick out the point of where it does become a problem because then it's all over. Okay, Welcome to the crypto teacher. teacher. And you know I come back with that video just to make you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And guys, first we had Warren Buffett said Jay Powell is doing a wonderful job. Now we have Warren Buffett state the U.S. dollar is not going anywhere. When we clearly see the globe is getting off the dependency of the U.S. dollar. And we know why, guys. The fourth industrial revolution is going to rise in the emerging markets. The BRICS nations led by China. The Belt and Road. And guys, this is not the first time we had Warren Buffett tell us a story. We know the billionaires don't give us the whole truth. They only give us half. What we have to do is follow the money. And we know Warren Buffett is 92 years old. He's always looked like your granddad. So you're definitely going to trust him. And we know that's how the NWO uses mainstream media. When I was growing up, when it came to your mainstream news, it was always an old guy telling the news because guess what? You're going to be trusting. But let's go back to the history of Warren Buffett. We have Wesco. We have Solomon Brothers, General Ree, Wells Fargo, Moody's, and Goldman Sachs. Warren Buffett has been caught in plenty of scandals. And if you go back to the history of Berkshire, you'll see a lot of shell companies created. But the mainstream media would never attack Warren Buffett's reputation. Because he's an NWO puppet. That's the only way they could move towards the agenda. Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, like I stated, look like granddads. And we had Charlie Munger speaking about manufacturing moving to Mexico. Remember, the only thing the NWO cares about is money and power. And we know the fourth industrial revolution, blockchains, robots, algorithms, and drones are going to give them all the power because blockchain gives them the all C and I. And when it comes to cryptos, they're going to be programmable, telling you what, where, and when, and how to buy. And you have three to six months to spend them or poof, it's gone. And remember the crypto teacher told you because he knows when it comes to the new world order, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. Uh, and uh, I think we should be very careful. I mean, you know, we all learned Keynesianism and we applied it in World War II to the advantage of the country and, and 
We did everything we could to prevent inflation during the war. And then the war ended in August of 45, and I think in January 46, and I'm not giving you exact figures at all now, but in January 46, I think the rate of inflation was at, at you know, something like 1% or thereabouts. And by the end of the year, I think it was at like 15%. And again, I'm doing this from long memories. But, but it's, it's easy for America to do us a lot. But if we do too much... It's very hard to see how you recover once you let the genie out of the bottle and people lose faith in the currency. And they behave in an entirely different manner than they do when they feel that if they put some money in the bank or have a pension plan or whatever it may be, that they're going to get out something with roughly equal purchasing power. And it just changes the economy, and all kinds of things can happen then. And I can't predict them, and nobody else can predict them, but I do know they aren't good. And uh, we will see. And I, I, I do this as, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I, I voted for both parties, and I'm, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not limited to politicians of either party or anything of the sort. Uh, uh, people take positions. Some of them understand what they're doing. Some of them don't understand what they're doing. Uh, and, uh, you know, if they put me on some medical board, I don't understand what I'm doing. You know, it's not that there's nothing wrong with the fact that you, that you can't master everything. It can't all be Isaac Newton, but, but you can't go around pretending you do or making decisions on it. And, and we, are not as well off in relation to curbing inflation expectations, which become self-fulfilling, uh, and we are not as well off as we were earlier. And Berkshire is better prepared than most investments for that kind of a period. I, but I said this in the annual report, but we aren't perfectly prepared because there's no, there's no way to perfectly prepare. You don't know what course of action will occur. And... Uh, it's a very political decision now. It's a tribal decision to some degree. Uh, and uh, you hope for leadership that, that uh, actually will do something, recognizes the problem. And America is an incredible society, rich. You know, every, we got everything going for us, but that doesn't mean we can just print money indefinitely. But, uh, uh, as, as, as that, and uh, uh, it'll be interesting to see how it turns out. Obviously, it's logical if you're in business and you can make the thing in Mexico way cheaper. It's natural to open a factory in Mexico and, in Mexico and get, get your parts cheaper, and a lot of the auto manufacturers have done exactly that. Going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go, but Clearly, we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're, going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. And so we'll import Chinese-based CBDC technology. So it's going to be CBDC in a box. Uh, provided to you by the People's Bank of China. Crypto teacher and the New World Order book, plus the three kids' books, is time to re-educate. Also, new to cryptos, Coinbase, Bitchu, Binance. Do not forget book links and crypto links are in the description. The stock channel, guys. Don't forget to go like, subscribe, spread everywhere. You have your Kobo, your chip size, your banking, your gaming. While everybody's sitting at home, get on stocks to see where the biotech stocks. And while everybody's at home wishing, they were still getting that free money. What are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks and you have a wonderful day. Most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. 
The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come. Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis. Whether it's your job, whether it's in your community, we have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share, but this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part one. King Yahshua and Grandma Tim. Face the village. Part two. King Yahshua and Grandma Tim. Face New York. Long COVID 33. Part three. King Yahshua and Grandma Tim. Goes to China. It's mandatory to get part one, part two, and part three of this series. It's time to re educate Generation Z.